Hey guys, welcome back to Flatpak Effects. Now in order to make this sky replacement effect inside of Premiere Pro, you're going to need two clips. Now the first clip is going to be your base clip. And for mine, I'm just using this shot that I filmed here, which pans down off the sky of these two girls just sitting here in front of the sunset. Now your clip doesn't have to be moving, but it does make this effect look quite good if you can have some sort of movement. So here I've just got a little bit of camera movement or where the camera's moving forward. And that just really adds a lot to this effect. You just don't want any complex camera movements. Otherwise you'd have to do this effect inside of After Effects because of tracking issues. Now we're gonna run through that in a minute. Now the other clip you're going to need is some sort of time-lapse of the night sky or whatever you're going to transition into. So with my sunset clip, what I'm going to do is just right click and I'm going to come down here and create a new sequence from that clip. Now a very simple way to do this effect is I can just take this clip, move it up one layer and I can just drag my star layer directly underneath. Then all I need to do with that clip selected, I can come over to effects and I can just come down here and search for gradient wipe. Now the one that I want here is under transition and I can just drag that straight onto my clip. Now if I drag up on this, you can see that what it's doing is it's removing the darker part of the image. I can just hit invert and straight away you've already got the effect that you're kind of aiming for here, right? It just removes the sky and that's kind of what we want. What we can also do is just scale this back clip up just to fill that background. And that's pretty much your finished effect, right? So that's a really easy way of doing this. But you might run into a few issues here when you start to drag up on the softness. So if I drag up on the softness here, you can see it's starting to remove more of that, that lower part of the image. And we want to try and keep that. So this is where this effect might work for some particular clips, but we need to give Premiere Pro a bit more information to really make a really solid mat that we can use. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete the gradient wipe on that layer. And I want to turn this layer into a Luma mat. So the way we do this is I basically come down here and drag and drop a Lumetri color on the top of this. And what I want to do is I want to come down here and start messing around with these settings. So what I'm going to do is just drag up on the contrast. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make the lighter part of the image white and I want to make the part that I want to keep black. So I'm dragging down on the blacks at the same time I'm also dragging up on the white. I'm gonna make this quite contrasted. And I can also come down here to the curves and drag up on this and I can also drag down on this, all right? I'm also just going to basically drag all the saturation out of this and I'm basically just trying to tweak this to get it to that point that I can remove all of that. So basically just mess around with the settings until you get something like this. Now we can remove this part down here. We don't need to worry too much about that at this point. So what I'm going to do is drag these two up here and I'm just going to create a duplicate. I'm holding Option or Alt on my keyboard and just dragging that layer down to that that basically duplicates it. I'm just gonna delete the Lumetri color on that bottom one. Next, I want to take the time-lapse layer and I want to basically tell it to use the Luma mat of this layer above. So to do that, what I can do is come across here and search for matte, and I'm going to use the track matte setting. And what I can do is set this to be the video layer above and set this to be the matte luma. And that is going to remove the part which is white from our image and basically keep the part below. Now I'm not too worried about this part because I can basically just create a bit of a mask there to cover this up. But this method will give you a much cleaner finish, right? It gives you a lot more control over those edges. So if you're working with more complicated shots, this is definitely going to give you much better results than just using the straight up gradient wipe. So now what I want to do is I want to try and basically pick the point in which I'm going to transition in and just drag these two clips in because I don't need to see that. I only needed to start transitioning, say, from 
this point here. And the other issue that I've got is that the stars layer is not moving to match to my foreground layer, right? So as the camera is panning down, the background layer is not matching and it becomes quite obvious. Now, a simple way of doing this or fixing this in After Effects would just be to create basically a camera track and then we can parent that to that layer. But inside of Premiere Pro, you can't necessarily do that as easily. Now, one way to do that might be to use Mocha Pro. So if you had access to the paid plugin Mocha Pro, you could simply just track that all inside of Premiere Pro and then just paste that information straight onto that layer. But because this clip is quite simple in the way that it moves, as in it's panning straight down, we could probably just make some manual keyframes to make that follow that much that layer above. Now, if I just grab this stars layer here and just basically moved it up and down, you can see that it's not gonna work because it's using that track map position from that layer above. So what we can do is we can take that layer, just right click and nest. So I'm just gonna nest that clip. And what I'm going to do is just take that track map key because we don't want it on that layer. We want it back on this layer and just paste it back on this layer, right? And what I'm also going to do is take this sunset clip, copy this and paste it over the top of this layer. I'm going to delete the Lumetri color on that layer and I'm just going to turn down the opacity and I'm going to use this as a guide to positioning my stars layer. So what I can do is I can move this down slightly and I'm trying to pick a point to line up with the horizon. I've also got to scale in because now we're starting to lose the top part of our image here to something like that. I'm going to create a position keyframe there, also a scale keyframe there at the start. And as it's moving along, I'm just going to manually position keyframe this layer so it roughly lines up there at the start. So I'm just creating some position keyframes here. And I'm also just going to select all those keyframes and just make sure that the spatial interpolation is set to linear and that's going to stop it from animating basically as a Bezier. So it's just going to smooth out that animation. So you just keep adjusting these until you roughly have that in the right spot. Then I'm going to turn off that layer and come back to my original composition. And if I play through that, you can see that we've roughly got it in the right position there. The other thing that I did was also add a scale keyframe here so that it's zooming in because the camera is moving forward. I need it to grow in size over time. So it's got to scale up. So I just added a scale keyframe there at the start, scaled that up towards the end. And then to actually get the transition, then we can go back and add the gradient wipe. So I go back down to the transition, add that on top. And this is where we can now start to control that transition. So I'm gonna scale this all the way up to 100. I'm gonna create a keyframe there from where I want the transition to start and then scale this down to zero where I want it to end. Now, as I play through, you can see we're getting that dissolve effect. Something else I can also do is scale up on this softness. Now, as I scale up on this softness, you'll notice it changes the look that we get. So that's just gonna be a personal preference. This is another advantage of doing it this particular way, because as I showed you back in my original composition, if I take that same setup where we just dragged the gradient wipe straight on top using no luma mat, then as soon as I scale up on this, we start to remove part of that image underneath. So it's starting to affect that layer underneath. So this is where you're going to get a much cleaner edge by doing this particular method. Now, one other thing I did is if you've got any issues with stuff missing down here, you can just take that clip, duplicate it again up the top, just delete the Lumetri color off that. And you can just create a basically a mask which sits over the top and I can just invert that and give that a little bit of a feather. And that's just going to hide anything underneath that layer. Now you do have to also animate that mask because as it comes back here at the start, it will start to cut off part of that clip. 
So just keep that in mind if you're going to use that to duplicate the bottom part of that clip. One other thing I did was also right click, create a new adjustment layer. I just dragged that on top. And then I came over here to the color tab, which opens up Lumetri Color. And I can then just go ahead and add a look straight onto this. So you can add any sort of look, just one of the presets will work absolutely fine. Otherwise you can use your own LUTs or whatever you want. And then if I just come across to my effects controls, what I can also do is I'm just gonna bring the intensity down very slightly there. I'm also just gonna create a temperature control and I want to drag this up. So at the start here, I want it to be a little bit warmer. I'm also just gonna create a slight contrast here as well. And then as the transition fades on, I'm just gonna bring this, basically crush this down a little bit, maybe bring this back to zero and then bring this one back to zero here as well. So we kind of get a bit more of that blue. So it starts off a bit warmer and then fades over to something a little bit cooler. So we get that nice transition there. So then when I play through, we have the finished effect. Now, another advantage with doing this particular method over the other method is that you can add drag and drop transitions to that layer to get different effects. So what do I mean by that? Well, if I turned off this gradient wipe and just came over to my effects controls, what I can do is come down to video transitions and any of these transitions, I can drag straight over the top of that clip and it'll animate that sky using that particular method. So I could add any of these different effects by just dragging and dropping them straight over the top and it'll automatically apply that transition to that layer. So if you wanna mix your effect up even more, that's something else that you could also do to that particular layer. So there's a really easy and quick effect that you can do all inside of Premiere Pro. Now, if you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out more videos over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.